podcast about knitting and crochet and my journey as a full-time crochet and knitwear designer. Um, and you can already see <laughs> the thing that I want to show first, um, which is my Yeti plushie. So here he is. Um, I never managed to take pictures that show his size. Like he's, he's quite the sizable fella. Um, so yeah, so I thought I would show you on camera. Uh, so the Yeti plushie is a crochet pattern with Scapius furry tails and Scapius katona. And it was uh, previously published in Inside Crochet, um, issue 129. And now I am free to publish it as a pattern in my shops. So um, it is available in my Ravelry shop and in my New Leaf web shop, which is just newleafdesigns.nl. Um, and you can get it as a PDF crochet pattern. I have, um, I have a Dutch version, I have an English version, and um, no wait, I have a Dutch version, I have a UK English version, and a US English version. So there are three separate PDFs, and once you purchase the pattern, you will have access to all of these PDFs, and you can just choose which one you want to download. So yeah, the Yeti plushie! <laughs> it was uh, a lot of fun to make this little guy. And uh, so he's basically just a giant rectangle, see? And then the other parts are rectangles too. Um, so it's quite easy. Although I would say the Furry Tails yarn comes with its own challenges. So I've put some tips in the pattern um, how you can work with fluffy yarn like this because you can't always see your stitches. Um, so yeah, this pattern is in my shop right now. Um, and it's... Oh, He's so nice. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing people make make a Yeti plushie. And I'm actually hoping someone will make a Sully with this pattern. So if you know the movie Monsters Inc. Um, and in Dutch I think it was Monsters and Co. Um, there was this tiny guy, this, this green alien Mike, and then this big you know, furry yeti type guy, which was Sully. And uh, he's, I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen of Sully and then the yarn that I have in mind for recreating this version. So Skippy's Furry Tales has loads of different colors and one of the colors, uh, 990, is called uh, Little Mermaid. It is like blue with uh, greens. And even though Sully doesn't have green, uh, I think this would be a really great choice if you want to recreate him. And apologies because I noticed that I'm sounding kind of nasally. I <laughs> I am still suffering from a common cold. Um, so yeah, I'm luckily feeling much better today. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I've slept for most of the week. And actually most of last week as well. So... So that's why. Uh, yeah, so that's the Yeti plushie, and I will put him away now because otherwise I will just keep mm, cuddling him. Okay. Okay, say bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to be gifting him this holiday season, I think, because I think it is the perfect gift. Um, and I think not just kids would be happy to have. A yeti plushie. Um, right, and then I want to show you the other thing that I have finished since last time. Uh, you saw me working on the pumpkins. Halloween has come and gone, and I hung these up in uh, in a tree that was in the front yard. So, so I finished these. Um, last time they were still tubes, or maybe I had sewn them together in one bit, so they kind of looked like hats. 
um, they are in fact pumpkins and they so they are color work net um, this is corrugated ribbing or also called color work ribbing um, and I used two different yarns the kind of variegated red um, to purple is Scapius Secret Garden and the uh, ochre yellow is Scapius Metropolis. And then <clears throat> I have crocheted some string using uh, Scapius Alpaca Rhythm and Scapius Mohair Rhythm. So it's a really fine alpaca yarn and a really fine mohair. I uh, held them together and then I also uh put on some beads and yeah i just hung them in the tree outside and i kind of um you know attaching the the strand kind of makes them look more like christmas baubles but um yeah because you kind of don't see the stem anymore I had attached a stem, but um, yeah, I mean, now I can also use them for the festive season, so. But I think for next next year Halloween, I might just remove the beaded strands and then just, uh, you know, have them as actual pumpkins. Just, you know, <laughs> laying around somewhere. So yeah, those were quite fun. And I just, I have so much to tell you um, because I went to a lot of things um, and actually the days are getting quite scrambled in my head. So um, I talked about the Kreyadu, Kreyadu last time and just after recording that, um, the day, no. Uh, the weekend after the last podcast episode, I went on a yarn cruise, so a crochet and knitting cruise. Um, it was from Saturday until Tuesday, and I went with my mom, and it was organized by Wool of Fame, um, which is a yarn store quite close to me in Marsbracht, um, in the southern part of the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, we went on a yarn cruise. It was four days, uh, organized by Yarn Shop. They they also had a mini yarn shop on the boat. Uh, it was quite a large boat. It was, uh, it could, um, I think it had space for 90 people. Um, but I think we were with 60, 60 or something. Um, and it was just the best. And I have some footage of the cruise, just not a lot as I was busy chatting and knitting. So I will just put that on the screen while I'm talking. So we were on the cruise and we were kind of in the front part of the boat. Um, there were a lot of windows and we could see outside and um, like the, the travel agent would talk about where, you know, things we could see. Um, and we, we just... Um, uh, cruised through uh, a couple cities in the Netherlands, uh, Arnhem, Nijmegen, and Wijk bij Duurstede, and it was just really, really lovely. Um, but yeah, <laughs> honestly, we didn't really care where we were going. We were just happy uh, knitting and crocheting on the boat. Um, and I also filmed loads of people, just what they were working on, and I thought it was really interesting to see uh, how they hold their yarn and yeah just I love seeing busy hands so um, so I made sure to record a lot of that and yeah so every day we had a lovely uh, breakfast lunch and dinner on the boat and on the last day we had a captain's dinner which meant that the captain came to join us for dinner and everyone was a little bit more fancy than um than the other days so and one lady even had like a flower corsage and it was just 
really really nice and there even were fireworks like outside there was this was unplanned but it was during our captain's dinner that outside there were some fireworks so that was uh, quite special and so each day we would um like what's the verb cruise no <laughs> not drive uh sail is it sail not really but i'm gonna use it because i don't know anything else um so <laughs> no this is no this is not right i'm gonna look it up okay i actually think the english term is sail even though this boat doesn't have a sail but um anyway so each day we would sail for about two or three hours um and then we would be stationary at um the harbor um and then we could go into the city or wherever we were so we were in Arnhem and Nijmegen uh the first two days and then the third day we were in uh, Wijk bij Duurstede which is just um it's also is it a city or is it's like a small city uh and it's surrounded by uh, i don't really know how to how to say it's i think it's a dike yeah it's surrounded by dikes um and there's a little castle and it was just really it was really beautiful there was a mill uh so a windmill so it was just really, really Dutch. Um, and yeah, we had a lovely time. And there were workshops on the boat. And the, the you know, the food was just, it was perfect. The crew was amazing. So we the boat was Azola. And I don't know which language it is. But uh, Azola means like... Um, uh, a little plant uh, floating on water and it, it grows roots but it doesn't attach to anything so they thought it was a really nice metaphor for a ship um, and yeah um, it was just um, they remembered small details like I asked them for hot water on the first day because they had my own tea bags I'm, I'm pretty uh, particular about tea nowadays so uh, <laughs> So I bring my own tea. Uh, and then the next day I want to ask them um, for water and they say, oh, hot water. <laughs> and uh, it was just the things that they remember, like um, if we wanted to order drinks, we had to give them our room number so, uh, so they could put it on our tab and then we would pay it the last day. And um, like they would remember our room number even though, you know, we had like, I think we were with 60 people so there were like 30 40 rooms so it was uh yeah um the crew was amazing um and the people were all so so nice uh i knew quite a few of them since uh uh, you know, they were either my sample makers or testers or I had met them at Wall of Fame or uh, they had been to one of my workshops. Uh, so it was just really nice. Um, yeah, it was the best. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the projects that I took on board with me. Uh, and the project that I wanted to get um, the most um, progress on was my Stephen West mystery knit along and three other people on board were also knitting the Stephen West mystery knit along which was super fun um, so actually uh, let me put in that footage now uh, because I I think I took a video or a picture of um, of some of the shawls put together so that was just really fun um and <laughs> oh right and we also had like bingo one night and it was just yeah we we had loads of fun yeah and um they are going to go in ugh, my english they are going to do it again next year and um yeah i already know i already know i'm gonna be there so super fun and I think you know you could totally join if you're not Dutch there there were some uh, people for from Germany there uh, so at the bingo they would also <laughs> shout the numbers in German uh, and in English although that that got confusing quite quickly 
um, yeah, and some of the workshops were in German as well. So um, yeah, if if you're um, if you want to come, just come. <laughs> So, uh, my mystery knit along, I, I was, I think I started working on this section, uh, when I, uh, was on the boat and then I finished, like, I almost finished the baubles. <laughs> the baubles were, they took me a long time. So the mystery knit along, I started it a while ago. So October 9th, because it came on October 8th, and I started it the next day. Um, so I, I haven't shown any of it on camera yet. So let me just show you. So you start here with this half moon section um, with, with short row wedges like this. And the pattern has you do the red stripes in reverse stockinette but I did that in garter stitch not because I'm lazy but because uh, in the finished uh, in the photos because I was looking at photos of other people um, and in the photos it was kind of looking like the colors in between were kind of squished out or <laughs> how do you say that it, they were being obscured by the purl stitches um, because that's just the way that ribbing works so if you have reverse stockinette and then stockinette um, the reverse no that's not it with ribbing it's it's the stockinette that shows but anyway I was I was looking at the pictures and it seems and it seemed like just the reverse stockinette stripes were visible and the other stripes not so much so I did garter um, to make the stockinette stripes in between more visible and I think that worked and uh, with blocking I think it will be even more visible so I'm really happy with that and then this section with slipped stitches looks really, really interesting. And it was really fun to do. So um, I'm not going to tell you how to do it, um, just, you know, by the pattern. But um, it, was, it was really interesting. And I really like the fabric that it creates. And then after that... I think he had some kind of loops in the pattern um, that created like really big holes and I didn't really like that so I substituted that uh, with some bubble stitch. So bubble stitch is also a stitch that Stephen West often uses uh, so I just looked at one of his uh, videos where he was explaining the stitch and I just put that in. Um, then, uh, this is the start of clue two, so the slip stitch, um, columns. Um, I did less of that because the bubble stitch is actually a little bit larger than the loops that I substituted it for. So, um, yeah. So I shortened this just to be on track again. And then there are the mosaic triangles, which was, I actually thought this was not so fun because mosaic knitting is like great to do if you want the effect of color work, but not, um, but you only want to knit with one color at a time. And because I am used to color work and I don't mind it, this was just really, really tedious for me because I had to knit each row try twice. Um, and it was just, yeah, I, at the end I was like, I wish I just did it in, um, in color work. But um, I still love the way it looks. And then the baubles, which took a lot of time um but still and my baubles don't look so neat so they have a little they they look like elongated so i might try to fix them and they have like large loops at the top and bottom so yeah i i might try to fix that if it doesn't look great 
after washing them. Uh, and then still glue to the big wedges on each side. So these wedges, um, I did this wrong <laughs> because uh, I misread the pattern. Oops. So um, I did it so that one color is stock net and the other is garter, but um, yeah, apparently that's not right. So um, I think there should actually be one more pearl row in here so that it kind of looks like, I don't know, it just, <laughs> uh, I did three knit rows and one pearl row which results in this but one of the knit rows should have been pearl so it should look a little bit different which means that when I got to the other wedge which you do starting from the other side um, I had to modify this pattern so on this side I had to purl three rows at knit one row so in a repeat of four rows uh, so yeah but um, the purling I didn't really mind it I was just you know <laughs> feeling congested and sitting on the couch the whole day and finally I had a little bit of energy to knit because I had knit for three days previously to that um, so you know I was really sick <laughs> I did not knit for three days um, and yeah then I, I just finished that wedge in that day so that was nice um, <clears throat> then I moved on to the brioche but I have ripped it back since so um, right now no I want to show you what I knit previously first. So I'm going to put in a little clip of how the brioche looked at first. And I had the dark green um, on the front and I thought this is great because I really love the dark green and I wanted to show uh, as much as possible in this shawl. But then on the wrong side I had the really light color and I just kept looking at the wrong side and I was like wow that looks much better. Um, so yeah I should turn it around and then I kept fighting it. I kept <laughs> just knitting rows of brioche and then until I really saw like okay it does look better on the wrong side so I ripped that back and I was also able to um, because I did not like that you know you have the wedges on each side but in the middle it just uh, the brioche kind of just continues from the baubles and I didn't like that uh, I did not have separation from the green section here and then the green brioche so I did two rows of this kind of like wine red color in between which is nice because that is the color that I used for the wedges at the start so I think that kind of pulls it together um, and then, uh, so I started the brioche again, but then with the colors um, um, switched around so that on the front you will see the really light color. Um, and then you will still see the dark green very well, but just on the, on the green side you only see the green and you barely see the light color. So yeah, I learned a bit about brioche and now I'm actually tempted to do a brioche pattern myself because I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, so that is my mystery knit along shawl progress so far and actually I think the remainder will be quite fast because, well, famous last words, it, it is a Stephen West pattern. So, um, so yeah, I think 
the brioche section will go by quickly because I'm really enjoying that and you know seeing what I have already ripped back and then re-knit in one day I think I think it will go by quickly but then I will have the kind of like crisscross rows and I need to kind of check how to do that um, and then the border so I've seen loads of borders that I like because I don't really like the vertical stripe ones um, yeah and I, I know that the border is going to be what you see most when you wear the shawl so it's it's going to be most important um, and I've seen two borders that I really like one uh, one knitter has used the bubble stitch again. I mean, has used the bubble stitch. And I think if I use that again in my shawl, uh, that that would really tie together and be really nice. And one, um, one person used a border from, oh, one of his other patterns. I think it was Chevron Shenanigans. It was just like a zigzaggy border with some lace and then a uh, i-card bind off um, and that was really nice as well but I'm just I'm going to have to see how big it gets um, yeah so yay <laughs> um, I wish I could really spread it out but um, yeah next time hopefully I will have much more progress next time uh, so that's one of the projects that I took with me on the boat and the others so I have a lace sock that I'm knitting on and so <clears throat> if you'll remember the kind of the blue lace socks that I did with this pattern this is, I'm, I'm thinking of doing like a lace sock collection. So, and this is going to be the second pattern in there. It's kind of hard to show <laughs> uh, because it's not blocked yet. So now it's looking like a very textured. Um, it is this pattern. So kind of like a, uh, small triangle triangles or small uh, zigzags and I really like it and uh, I wanted to do this brown color uh, because and I know so from a designer point of view it might not be very smart because brown often does not sell well uh, you know, people people buy patterns when they are really drawn to the picture. So uh, often, you know, rainbow patterns do really well, or like beautiful uh, ombre colors because it draws in the knitter or the crocheter, and they want to get the pattern. But um, I want to create a really wearable sock. Um, so yeah i'm not going to create a super colorful version for the pattern and then knit a subdued version for myself um yeah <laughs> i just want to knit a sample and then actually use it and for this one so um i really like kind of like cottage core uh, vibes. Um, I think it has been brought on by The Sims because I have the Cottage Living pack and they just have such cute items in there and I actually want to create knee-high socks. <laughs> I'm still doubting whether that's a look that I can pull off but maybe. So yeah. So I think that will be really cute, but you know, I have a way to go with this. Um, <clears throat> and I also cast on some other socks. I've just completed the heel. Um, and these are the, well, I call them the anchor socks because they will have an anchor on the leg. Uh, and this was the exclusive um, oops, 
sock pattern on the cruise uh, and I thought it was really cute. And I'm using Abby Crazy Trio socks. So they're kind of like bendy DPMs, uh, but because they bend, you only need three in total instead of normally when you would knit with uh, four or five. So, um, so this is one needle and this is another needle. Um, I have already lost this needle once um, and then found it again, obviously. So it is a little bit um, dangerous, <laughs> like not all needles are attached. So I need to, um, yeah, I need to figure out something because, well, I might just get, um, I have like a DPN cozy, so something that just snaps over all of the needles. Um, so I might just do that. And the yarn, so this is super soft yarn. I'm using an alpaca sock yarn. Um, I've lost the tag. This is long yarns and it's called alpaca socks, but socks spelled with S-O-X-X. -X. And it is so soft. So um, it is, it does have a halo because yeah, that's the alpaca. Um, I wonder if it will hold up enough. Um, yeah, and also I've knitted a little bit smaller because alpaca has a reputation of stretching a lot. So yeah, I knitted uh, just over 56 stitches just to be nice and snug. And there is a striped pattern in there, which is really cute. And then the pink is Yawol, also by Lung. And these Yawol skeins have a little bit of reinforcement thread. That is the same color. And I think this is genius. Um, and you just double strand it. Um, so one strand of each when you knit the heel or a toe and so I knit the toe with just the alpaca yarn but for the heel I double stranded the regular uh, long yarn and then a thread of the reinforcement yarn so yeah this is very sturdy right now um, I wonder if I will feel the difference in thickness because it is noticeably thicker than the um, rest of the sock, but I wonder if I will notice that while I'm wearing it and you know, maybe I will notice it, but maybe it will be nice. So these socks are kind of on the back burner right now. Um, yeah, but I do hope to finish them uh, sometime uh, because they are really, really cute. I want to show you the anchor pattern. So yeah. <laughs> It was just exclusive to the cruise. I don't think they sell the anchor sock pattern, but um, yeah. And it's living in my Fraukje bag. So uh, Fraukje van den Brink. Um, I think she is Fra Fraukje's wool on Etsy. I'll put her name on the screen. Um, yeah, and I think that was all that I knit on the cruise. And then one other thing that I want to show you, because one of the ladies on the cruise was Inke, and she lives in Switzerland, and um, in Egeri, and she does this awesome project uh, where she yarn bombs, you know, parts of the city or wherever. Um, and so I'm gonna show you some cards. Um, so she has like a collective of people that craft um, because crafting is still very much, you know, it's, it's still taught in schools in Switzerland. It's still very much there, even though they don't have a lot of uh, yarn stores or not really like um, yarn stores as we know them. So they have a lot of, I don't know, just, just commercial yarn or, but they don't really have like nice colored yarn or, yeah, 
so uh, or it, it's hard to find and so she does these yarn bombing projects and you can find it on egirifarabic.ch uh, and I'll put that on the screen uh, and they also have an Instagram account I think and so after a couple of weeks they take it down and then they repurpose the parts um, they made bags with some of the you know knitted or crocheted squares and uh, she's also created cards so this is of a yarn bond bench and it says farbige grüße so colorful greets um colorful greetings uh big hugs from egeri and it's just so cute uh, this was kind of like a pom-pom field that they did. Um, oh, so cute. Imagine a pom-pom field. Oh, I want to be there. Um, no idea what this means, even though I know a fair bit of German. But um, yeah, I think it's like local language. So really cute. Um, and a little mouse, and it says, hello. <laughs> yeah, so really cute. Uh, I love that, um, you know, she says this is now basically her full-time job. She uh, has this collective. She yarn bombs uh, parts of cities, and they are kind of like in the cultural sector now, so they actually get requests from, I don't know, the council or, or what uh, so they get requests uh, to yarn bomb a certain area and then afterwards they take it down and then sell those pieces you know rework them in something and also you know cards and I think that is such a great idea I've always loved the idea of yarn bombing but not the idea that it kind of sits there in rain and wind and all the sunshine that bleaches it and I think it must get so dirty after a while and um, yeah to take it down and then repurpose it that's awesome so I loved that story so please do go check them out um, yeah and after that um, after the cruise you know I was home and um, just thinking about the lovely time I had um, and I also did a workshop a couple days after that so I went to Belgium I went to Deinze and there's this yard shop Atelier 9 A so Atelier 9 A doesn't sound as good in English Atelier 9 A uh, I taught a workshop on I want to say mini socks. I taught a workshop on socks, but we made a mini sock during the workshop. So, a really mini sock. Um, with Scapius Metropolis, of course, because I love Scapius Metropolis. Um, and yeah, we just made a mini sock uh, to be able to go through all of the techniques within the three hours that we had. and. I had only taught how to knit socks um, to, you know, uh, to my relatives, you know, people who were just, um, they did not just have a three hour window, they could, al they could always uh, talk to me again the next week or something, uh, or online with my video tutorials, uh, my Simple to Up Sock tutorial series here on YouTube, which is, I don't know, how many hours long uh, but uh, I'm a with that I'm able to speed through things uh, or you know um, you are not going to complete all of that in three hours time so beforehand I had done a lot of swatches <laughs> to figure out what is the best size to knit and also you know I could knit a larger sock in three hours but they will probably not be able to. Uh, so after one hour, we had gotten the toe. 
<laughs> so I knew that, okay, in the next hour we'll probably then do the heel and then we have a bit left for um, the cuff. And uh, yeah, so I think I have that down now. Um, and in January I will teach another sock workshop, but then for an afterthought heel. So I'm really looking forward to that um, because just for an afterthought heel you need to cut into your knitting and I'm really looking forward to like the squeals of like oh, I'm cutting into my knitting <laughs> and then you know and then the joy of it not falling apart so um, yeah I'm, I'm guessing that this is also how people feel who teach steaking workshops or who steak um, themselves, their, their own knitting. I'm working on my first steaked project and so I have to knit it first and then steak it. So looking forward to that. But yeah, if you would like to knit socks, there is the simple toe up sock uh, pattern in my shops, um, on my website and the tutorial videos here on YouTube. So be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, and then, okay, talking about socks, <laughs> I am just, I have a lot of things to share, so I'm just racing through things, so I hope, I hope you don't mind. Um, I thought about doing smaller videos, you know, one about the Yeti plushie, one about the workshops, um, but I don't think I would have the time to edit that all, so feel free to just watch this in parts. I do not, you know... Don't feel bad for like just <laughs> muting me for uh, a day and then coming back. Um, that's totally fine. That's exactly how I watch podcasts too. I mean, I love watching the grocery girls, but it's like two, two hours in one go. Um, I can't do that. So <laughs> I just watch for half an hour at breakfast and then watch for half an hour again in the evening. So, so talking about socks. I have been mending some socks too. I have gotten these two from Emily from the UK and I have mended these for her. Um, so they're here. This one, this one is a little bit felted or a little bit. It's, it's a lot <laughs> felted, which I think must feel amazing if you wear them when you wear them. Um, and the heel was a little bit worn out, so I mended that with some Swiss darning and the toe I just reinforced that bit too so yeah I used this yarn and I actually I actually held these together so this is some of my own hand dyed yarn uh, I dyed this with cochineal and this is also hand dyed but not by me um, and I held these together because this is quite a, I think it's a worsted weight or iron weight. And she sent me some of the yarn, but I thought I wanted to give it a different accent. So, so yeah, I really like that. And for this one, so this one was a little bit more difficult because this is an acrylic sock, I think. Sorry, I'm sounding very nasally again. Ah, sorry. <laughs> So, uh, she also sent me some of uh, the scraps for this sock. So I mended this patch with that yarn. And then for um, the side of the toe was also a little bit worn down. Uh, and I don't have a lot of acrylic yarn anymore. Uh, but I managed to find some stone washed. Because I couldn't just um, mend this with wool. Because... Um, Washing an acrylic sock is easy, but then if you have parts that have wool, then that part would like felt or maybe distort. So I wanted her to be able to wash it as she was used to. So um, I used the same fiber content. So yeah, two pairs of uh, two mended socks. <laughs> I wanted to say two pairs, but and then for my sister-in-law. Um, she, she has a pair of my hand knit socks and she had some 
huge holes in them. And I thought, okay, I want to try something more artistic here. Um, and I did a rose. So <laughs> this was really fun to do. It also took a lot of time. But um, yeah, so I just, I found a chart on Pinterest. I, I just drew it down on some paper. And for the heel, I just did regular uh, Swiss darning. But yeah, I wanted to do something fancy here. And I think that that worked. I hope it's not too thick because you do really feel it. But um, I actually have the same suit shoe size, so I put it on and to me it just felt like a little bit of a cushion um, because it is on the sole, you know, so. Uh, but it just felt like a little bit of a cushion, so I think she won't mind. Um, and this way, if you have your feet up, you can see the rose. So I think that was really cute. Um, yeah, and if you want to learn how to darn as well, I have a darning masterclass on my Patreon page. Uh, granted, we won't go through anything like this, but you will learn the basics. So Swiss darning, you will learn weaving, you will learn crochet darning, and you will learn how to mend on a crochet granny square. And there's probably something else that I forgot. But with those techniques, you could surely tackle something like this. Um, yeah, this was really fun. So, yeah, a whole pile of mended socks. And I noticed some more holes in my own socks, so I'll be able to mend those later. <laughs> and then the last thing that I'm going to be sharing, um, I had some more, but... I think it's going to be too long otherwise. So, um, so the last thing, I am preparing a little holiday kit. Um, and that is going to be a minis kit. So I still have some hand dyed yarn left over. Um, I have stopped dyeing yarn. I am actually <laughs> dyeing some yarn again today. Um, but you know, I, it's just some yarn that I'm over dyeing. Um, so last year, I think it was also in November, I sold, um, I did the last sale of my hand dye yarn, but I still have some stock left. So I am going, I've made some minis. <laughs> and I think I'm going to prepare some mini kits. So that you can have loads of colors in one little bundle and then you can make something with that. So stay tuned on that. I will have more information on that very soon via Instagram, I think, and my newsletter. So yeah, thank you so much for... <laughs> I almost dropped them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very, very soon. I'll be back in two weeks and I'll see you then. Bye-bye!